My goodness, what has WWE done on the road to WrestleMania? We got a lot to talk about tonight. But I thank you guys for joining me here tonight for the review slash podcast for Elimination Chamber on Sunday night, February 21st, 2021. I hope everybody is having a great night. Hope y'all enjoyed Elimination Chamber. Um, up until what we saw with the final s- segment, until it went for the show ended, Elimination Chamber was a solid show. It went down after that, obviously. It wasn't a bad pay-per-view, but man, that ending really left a sour taste in my mouth. I think you got all you guys know what I'm talking about with the new WWE champion, the Miz. The damn Miz. And we're gonna talk about it. We are gonna talk about it. We are gonna dive into everything on the show. Um if you guys haven't already um Actually, I'm not even going to promote my uh, other videos from this week. I just want to get straight into the Elimination Chamber review here tonight. The good thing, a positive thing about this show tonight is there's only five matches. I'm not saying that's positive. But this show got over at 9.30. Two and a half hours. Absolutely beautiful. I'm done here. I'll have this video up by 10.30, and boom, I'm good to go. So, that was a positive that the show had good timing, and it got over by about 9.30 tonight. But, the ending left a sour taste in not only my mouth, but a lot of fans' mouths. So, let's dive on into it, shall we? We started off the main card, uh, I'm not going to talk about the pre-show match, just to save time, but we started off the main card with the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match with uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, King Corbin, and Jey Uso first making their entrances, and then Cesaro and Daniel Bryan started off the match. King Corbin came in next. Got some nice offense in on Cesaro. Sami Zayn then came in at number four. He locked himself in the pod, trying to not escape the best way he could. Closing the pod. Then the other pod, the other side of the pod that Sami Zayn was in, was open. Cesaro got in there. Cesaro attacked Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn tried to get away. And then later on, both of them were up halfway through the Elimination Chamber. And Sami Zayn was climbing up, and Cesaro kicked Sami Zayn down, and he did pull-ups on the elim- on top of the Elimination Chamber, which was very cool, I thought. Um, Kevin Owens, then uh, Cesaro, then later on, uh, he eliminated King Corbin, uh, swing, and then the sharpshooter, Cesaro tapped out King Corbin. Then Kevin Owens came in at number 5. Sami Zayn wanted to team up with him. That did not work out. Uh, Owens went after Sami Zayn. Then, later on, I believe at this point, Owens had eliminated Sami Zayn with a stunner. So, could we possibly get a Kevin Owens-Sami Zayn match one-on-one at WrestleMania? We'll have to see what happens, but it could very well happen. But then last came in Jey Uso, and when Sami Zayn got out, Jey Uso put KO's arm in between the the structure and the door where you close the the elimination chamber. So KO K Kevin Owens' arm was stuck. Uh, in the elimination chamber, um, he he super kicked Jay Uso, 
Uh, Jay Uso super kicked Kevin Owens about four times, got him in the ring, gave him another super kick. Uso splash, and Kevin Owens was eliminated by Jay Uso. And then, moments later, Cesaro got eliminated by Jay Uso with an Uso splash, which I I was a little bit disappointed about. I wanted Cesaro to win this match. And go on to have an awesome match with Roman Reigns. But we'll talk about that after this match. The final two was down to Jey Uso and Daniel Bryan. They had a good back and forth together. Jey Uso got on top of one of the pods. He missed the, his frog splash. He missed the Uso splash all the way from the top of the pod. Uh, Daniel Bryan then capitalized. Hit a running knee. On Jey Uso and Daniel Bryan won the Elimination Chamber. Daniel Bryan won the SmackDown Elimination Chamber. He was laying there the entire time. Could not get up. He was still in the ring. And the Elimination Chamber was rising. So I was like, oh, Roman Reigns is about to come out next. That is exactly what happened. Out came Roman Reigns to defend his Universal title. Against Daniel Bryan. And this was basically. To set up. You know what happened with Edge. After the match. This was a whole setup. This match. The universal title match between Daniel Bryan. And Roman Reigns. It didn't even go that long. It was three minutes. Bell rang. Roman Reigns went for the spear. Brian reversed it into the yes lock. Roman Reigns got out of it. He then started to destroy Daniel Bryan for a couple minutes. Put him in the guillotine. And Brian passed out. So Roman Reigns passed out Daniel Bryan in about three minutes to retain the Universal title. He's celebrating. Then he turns around, takes a spear from Edge, and Edge looks at the Universal Championship and he points to the WrestleMania sign to confirm that the main event of WrestleMania, I'm guessing it's going to be on night two, the main event of WrestleMania 37 this year is going to be Edge versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. And I love it. I honestly do. I love it. Uh, Edge and Roman. It's a dream match. I said this on the Royal Rumble review. That Edge. I think it would make more sense for him. To challenge Roman Reigns. And the promos that these guys. Can have together leading up. To this match. Is going to be absolutely. Excellent. And I think the build to this match is going to be great. Worthy enough to get us hype. For Wrestlemania. Uh, main event between Roman Reigns and Edge. I think it's going to be very good. Uh, as for Daniel Bryan. Now after seeing this. I'm glad that Cesaro did not win. Because what I thought was going to happen was Cesaro was going to win. The main event of this show would be Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. They would have an awesome match together. Cesaro would Bring Roman Reigns so close to losing the championship, but he can't pull it out at the end. But they didn't do that. And if they had Cesaro and Daniel Bryan's spot, I would have been pretty upset. So, um, the fact that Bryan won, I was he was the, he was my other option. If Cesaro wasn't going to win, then it was probably going to be Bryan. But Bryan getting squashed in three minutes to Roman Reigns after getting destroyed and beat up inside the Elimination Chamber for about 40 minutes. It's not going to hurt him at all. So, um, it's fine, I guess. And I think if Roman retains the Universal title, uh, there's, your, there's your program after WrestleMania heading into the spring. Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. That is your program. Uh, after WrestleMania around Money in the Bank time. That, if Roman Reigns retains the Universal title at WrestleMania, that is your Universal title program after WrestleMania 
Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. They can bring this up. Daniel Bryan says, you, you couldn't, you didn't legit beat me. You beat me up when I was, when I was basically des destroyed in the Elimination Chamber. And they, they can go from there. I think that's a that's your perfect program after WrestleMania. But Daniel Bryan wins the chamber, Roman Reigns beats Daniel Bryan, and Edge and Roman Reigns is your WrestleMania main event. And then we got into the triple threat United States Championship match. Keith Lee was actually taken out of this match. WWE said it was due to injury. Uh, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that whatsoever. I've read reports how Vince McMahon is down on Keith Lee, that he's ups that he's angry, that Keith Lee is not like a typical WWE big man. Well, what what, what the heck do you want him to be? Do you want him to be? <laughs> do you want him to be Big Show? Do you want him to be Kane? I don't want Keith Lee. You know, those guys are they're, they're good and all. They're legends, whatever. But I don't want Keith Lee to be freaking Kane. Let Keith Lee be Keith Lee. I don't understand it. It's what's so difficult about letting a superstar j just let them be themselves instead of bring them down and uncool them, I guess you could say. So the fact that they went out there and they said Keith Lee is not participating due to injury. I'm not buying that at all. I think upper management pulled him from the match or whatever. Because, you know, I didn't hear Keith Lee come out and say he, he got injured. So, I, I don't know. I just find it complete bullshit how he was booked for a U.S. title match at at a Elimination Chamber. And they pulled him out. Like, I don't, I don't know. They pulled him out at like 4 o'clock, two hours before the show, two or three hours. So I find that really odd. Um, on the pre-show, we had a fatal four-way with Elias, Ricochet, Mustafa Ali, and John Morrison, where the winner would replace Keith Lee in the U.S. Championship match. Turned out to be John Morrison after he pinned Mustafa Ali. WWE continues to bury and make Mustafa Ali and Retribution into a, a joke. You might as well just break them up at this point, man. Seriously, they are the laughing stock of the WWE. Everybody makes fun of them. So, I mean, you, you might as well just break them up at this point. They are not credible whatsoever. And they are a bunch of jokes, really. Retribution is a bunch of jokes. So, we had this triple threat match. It lasted about 10 minutes, I'd say. Bobby Lashley, uh, no, MVP and John Morrison got into some arguments on the outside. Uh, after Morrison had the Starship Pain on Bobby Lashley. By the way, Starship Pain is one of the worst finishers in all of wrestling. It does absolutely nothing to your opponents and it gives no impact whatsoever. So MVP was like... You think that move is going to beat Bobby Lashley, the Almighty? You think you're going to beat him doing it that way? So Morrison was, talk was talking back at MVP. He took his crutch, MVP's crutch, and um, went in the, wing, the ring with it. Bobby Lashley put the hurt lock in on Morrison. Riddle got the crutch from MB MVP, hit it on Bobby Lashley, I believe, three times. Then he hit the bro Derek on John Morrison and Matt Riddle walked out tonight. Your new United States champion. I don't think anybody saw that coming at all. I mean, good for Matt Riddle. He's been a geek for months now. An absolute nerd on Monday Night Raw, but he, he's the new United States champion. Good for him. I was worried about what WWE would do with him at WrestleMania, but it seems like he's going to be defending the United States Championship. Against two, we'll have to see, but, you know, good for him. But this led to bigger things for Bobby Lashley 
later on in the night. He was irate. He was angry. He was pissed off after this match. And you could tell that he was going to take somebody out later on in the night. And then you had your women's tag team title match. I, I did not like this. The match was okay. I didn't like how it went down though. Sasha Banks and Car uh, Sasha Banks and uh, Bianca Belair against Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. I said it fr uh, Friday in the preview predictions. I didn't think that Sasha and Bianca were gonna win because. I don't see that them needing the tag team titles in the storyline. And they're going to have to come up with a way to satisfy me. To have them take a loss and make it look okay. They failed at doing that tonight. Reginald got himself involved in this match. He brung, up, he brung out some champagne. He rolled it in the ring. Sasha was like, I can't use this. I'm going to get disqualified. He gives it back to Reginald. Uh, she gets ran over by Nia Jax. Nia Jax hits a Samoan drop. And Nia Jax pins the SmackDown Women's Champion clean in the middle of the ring. So I was not satisfied by that at all. Um, having a bottle of champagne in Sasha's hand. And then her taking a clean loss to Nia Jax. Uh, I was not a fan of that at all. I did not like that. But we are still... Getting uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax going down to NXT on March 3rd to defend the titles against uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. I think, again, I said it on Friday. I think we all know that Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez should absolutely be that tag team to take the titles off of Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Those titles need to be away from the main roster. So NXT can make them at least a little bit prestigious. Just a little bit. And then we had the main event. We had the main event for the WWE Championship, which I thought my favorite match of the night. This was a really good Elimination Chamber match. And I honestly enjoyed this one more than I did the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match. We had Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles, Kofi Kingston, Sheamus uh, all enter first and ended our pods, of course. And then we had um, Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton start the match. Um, then after a little bit, Drew McIntyre came out. He went right after Randy Orton. Then Kofi came out. And what was shocking early, Randy Orton went for the RKO on Kofi. Kofi rolled him up. And Randy Orton got a was the first person eliminated in this match. We got nothing from Alexa Bliss. Nothing from Bray Wyatt. Randy Orton... Just got rolled up by Kofi Kingston. And he was the first one eliminated. So. Um, after that. He RKO'd Kofi Kingston. He RKO'd Jeff Hardy. He RKO'd Drew McIntyre. And then AJ Styles was yelling from his pod. Omos get me out of here. Get me out of here. So Omos. Rips. The pod that AJ Styles was in from the back, he ripped it, and AJ Styles got out of his pod, walks into Randy Orton, Randy Orton just walks away, AJ Styles runs in there, he covers Jeff Hardy, he covers Kofi Kingston, he covers Drew McIntyre, all of them kick out at two, then a couple moments later, Adam Pearce comes in and kicks out, um... He kicks, he kicks Omos out from the ringside because he's causing stuff in the match. Then Co uh, Sheamus was the last one eliminated. Uh, the last one in the match. He got into it with Drew McIntyre immediately. 
and then they were going at it. Kofi Kingston did a trust fall off the top of one of the pods to everybody inside the ring. I didn't really like that at all. That wasn't that wasn't too great. But Kofi then later on was eliminated by Sheamus from a bro kick. One, two, three. Jeff Hardy hit a twist of fate on Drew McIntyre. He hit a twist of fate on AJ Styles. And then Drew and Sheamus were brawling on the outside. Jeff Hardy goes to the top of the Elimination Chamber pod. And I thought he was going to hit the swan time on, on AJ. That's what I would have done if I was Jeff Hardy. Just eliminate AJ. Don't worry about what Drew and Sheamus are doing. I would have done that, but he hit the swan time on Drew and Sheamus on the outside. That's probably my favorite spot of the match. He then immediately ran in there, hit a swan time on AJ Styles. He got up, didn't go for the cover. He ate a bro kick from Sheamus, and Jeff Hardy was eliminated by Sheamus. We're down to the final three. McIntyre, Sheamus, and AJ Styles. So you have all three of those guys brawling. Drew goes for the Claymore to Sheamus. Sheamus ducks. He hits a he hits a bro kick on Drew McIntyre. Turns around. AJ Styles hits phenomenal forearm. And AJ Styles eliminates Sheamus. Then we're down to our final two. Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles. Styles goes for the phenomenal forearm. To Drew McIntyre. He's in midair. Drew McIntyre hits a Claymore kick. Absolutely beautiful finish. And Drew McIntyre retains the WWE Championship inside the Elimination Chamber. This was a really good Elimination Chamber match. Probably my favorite match of the night. Is it something I'll go back and watch? Maybe. Maybe, but it, it was a really good Elimination Chamber match. But then... This, this is what pissed people off. This is what pissed me off. The chamber rises, and I'm like, oh god, something's happening. Drew McIntyre is ready to leave the ring. He gets attacked by Bobby Lashley. So Bobby Lashley, from earlier in the night, when he lost the U.S. title, he takes his anger out on the WWE champion, Drew McIntyre, Throws him into the barricade. He's he he speared him on the outside. He is banging his head onto the announce table. He throws him back in the ring. He puts the hurt lock in on um he puts the hurt lock on Drew McIntyre. Bobby Lashley leaves Drew McIntyre laying. Then all of a sudden, out comes. The Miz with a referee and the Money in the Bank briefcase. He cashes in and he hits a DDT on Drew. Drew kicks out and I'm like, come on, Drew. You got to pin him here. Miz gets him up. Skull crushing finale. And the Miz successfully cashes in his Money in the Bank contract and wins the WWE Championship. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. The Miz, the guy that lost with John Morrison almost every single week on Monday Night Raw, the guy who was in a feud with Bad Bunny, right now on Raw, he is the WWE Champion. That is absolutely pathetic. I know my good friend, Bonafide Heat, Kevin, uh, absolutely hates The Miz and was very pissed off after Miz won the championship. Brother, I cannot blame you right there. I think everybody was pissed off. This is... A complete joke. Everybody's saying, oh, everybody's saying, oh, but there's Fastlane. 
we have Fastlane right before WrestleMania. And you know what? Drew's got, uh, Drew's got, Drew McIntyre, he's just going to win it back at Fastlane. And th what, what good does that do? What good does that do for Drew McIntyre? Because I'm pretty sure Bobby Lashley attacked McIntyre. They're setting him up for something big. They're probably setting him up for the WWE Championship. They're going to do Miz versus Drew McIntyre at Fastlane. Drew McIntyre is going to win back the championship, I think. And then what's he, is he going to drop it to Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania? Because you can't. You can't, they protected Bobby Lashley in the U.S. Championship match tonight. And they've been protecting him since God knows how long. Since he won the U.S. title. He has been outside of Roman Reigns. Obviously Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley has been the most protected superstar on the main roster since SummerSlam. He has been very... Protected by WWE. So what are you going to do? Are you going to have Drew McIntyre. Win the championship. And. Three weeks later drop it to Bobby Lashley. Or are you going to have. You know, you're going to build a Bobby Lashley for all this time. Have him. get Have him protected. While losing the US championship. And then have his WWE title match. At Wrestlemania and lose. WWE put themselves in a bad situation here, folks. First off, Sheamus is owed a WWE Championship match. So how are they going to do that? How are they going to do that with Sheamus now that Drew McIntyre is not the champion? They really got themselves in a bad situation here with The Miz being champion. You got Drew McIntyre, Sheamus... And now you got Bobby Lashley in the frame. So, I don't know what happened. They ruined a completely solid pay-per-view. It was not bad, but they turned they turned what was a solid pay-per-view, what I was going to give a thumbs-up pay-per-view, to a thumbs-middle pay-per-view. Just because of the way they ended the show with The Miz winning the WWE Championship. What a joke. And I said it earlier before I get out of here. What if Vince McMahon goes complete Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard go completely delusional and they set up the Miz versus Bad Bunny for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania? Holy shit. Talk about absolutely killing the WWE Championship. If you book that match, Miz versus Bad Bunny for the WWE title at WrestleMania, you're going to make that WWE Championship less prestigious than the 24-7 Championship. I'm scared. I'm scared about this WWE Championship scene on Monday Night Raw, heading into Fastlane and heading into WrestleMania, more importantly. I'm scared. But that is your Elimination Chamber review here tonight on the Big Fight Field channel. Thank you guys for watching the review podcast. Such a busy night, man. Such a busy night with Elimination Chamber. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed my review. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get the 400 subs before WrestleMania. So if you could, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. I want to know your thoughts about tonight's Elimination Chamber show. I'll get back to your comment, of course. Hit that like button if you like what you heard from me in the video. And go follow me on Twitter, at Colin underscore Joseph. We are close to twenty to, to 2.1K followers, 2,100 followers on Twitter. We're about 30 followers away. So if you haven't already, go follow me over on Twitter. And I will see you back here tomorrow night for your Monday Night Raw review with a whole fresh week of a uh, whole new week of fresh content here on the channel. So have a good night, guys. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy.